we're confirmed we have no power to the piece of Romex that we need to work on. Don't forget, it's always good to test on a known source. Now you know your voltage tester works and then confirm you have no power on the piece of Romex within question. So now we're safe to start the work. First up, I'm just gonna free up this piece of Romex by cutting off these zip ties. That gives us a little bit more to work with. And then I'm going to cut the wires evenly, the ground and the hot. And then I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these wires and prep them for the splice kit. You're going to cut your wires, your hot at an inch in length past the Romex, and then a quarter inch shorter. So three quarters of an inch for your neutral and your ground. All right, so the way that this splice works is you're actually just gonna press the wires in without stripping them, and, they're, and these little forks are gonna cut the insulation and make contact with the copper. Then you'll put this plastic top and you can see that has cradles in there. You'll put that on top and then you'll press that together and that is what's gonna press the wires down on those forks and make solid contact with each of the wires. That's also why you want to kind of preset your wires just to make it easier to line everything up, making sure your Romex goes through the middle, neutral and ground, meet up with their forks and then the hot also is aligned. So then we'll put the cap on top and then press that down into place. Then once you've confirmed everything li is lined up, they actually show in the instructions to use channel locks to press those into the forks. Now here's all the wires lined up. The nice thing with this clear top is you can confirm that you have solid connections with the forks and they actually did cut the insulation. And then there's some mounting screws that will hold everything together. Get both of those started. Be careful not to strip these screws or you're going to extend out your project. Alright, so there is one side completed. Now I'll do the other side. So now with the two halves, all you'll do is mate those up. So that's it for the splice and you can see now we have solid Romex, solid Romex, everything contained within the splice so we have no exposed wires. If you wanna go the extra mile, I know some people would prefer to then wrap this with electrical tape just to be confident that's all gonna to stay together and it has another layer uh, there with the electrical tape, but that is going to be up to you. you. This is approved just as it stands without the electrical tape. Now, to be honest, I do think it's a bit crazy that that's approved to be buried in the wall, and I definitely don't love the fork design, which you see in the manufactured home industry, and that's really where that splice came from. Now, an option that came out from WAGO since then is the WAGO 221 inline splice, or the 2401. This would be for one conductor going in one side, passing through inline splice. This would still need to be in the junction box, but this is in my standard kit and is my preferred method. So if you wanna know more about that one, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through my use cases and why it is now my chosen way to do inline splicing. 
So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.